welcome to our one of our training Hello. films or for amigos films my dog is making so you may have a little bit of get off uh you may have a little bit of interruption here and there um but i'll do my best to edit it out so uh so we're the four amigos uh wendy gail dory and gorgeous georges um and we talk about dementia and living with it and what people may be able to change in the way they uh, relate to us, work with us, meet us, whatever. And today we're going to talk about general practice in particular. Another point would be, another issue would be about how you get to see a GP, not who you see, but how you get there. Now, Wendy's already said she's been allowed to email her named GP could say personally, but to practice, presumably it's to a practice uh, It's email. to her secretary. Okay. Now, I had a discussion with my, well, the GP I, I suppose I used to see most often before COVID, um, and the practice manager about 18 months ago about this issue of um, making arrangements for people, not just people with dementia, but anybody who has cognitive mm. difficulties. Yeah. Um, and um, I was told, well, we can't do that for you because we have to do it for every uh, every type of patient. And so, and I, you know, I wasn't pleased with that. Um, mm. And I and of course I've I've talked about this to a number of people. And just last week or the week before, I was talking to an advanced practitioner nurse in a, in a practice in Salford. And she said that she tried giving her number to someone, not to do with dementia, to do with something else. And she ended up getting loads of phone calls from loads of other patients because they shared it and they shouldn't yeah. have. So but they're that's where, that's where the building the relationship comes up. Yeah. Because they... I wasn't given it before we no. had that relationship. It, you know, it's it's dealing just when with the GP your, trusted you. Yeah, yeah. And it's dealing with each G. It's it's the GP dealing with each patient as they see fit. Yeah, because we have a online booking as well. We yeah we don't use the te oh. You don't use the telephone. No, I don't use the can't. telephone. But they they try to move away from the telephone. You can go in and book an appointment. Yeah. But the telephone, they're, they're trying to persuade people who can use the internet to use yeah. the internet. Yeah. Obviously, I, there'll be some who don't. What no. how do you... Oh, there's no point in asking Gail, because she doesn't. But to, Dory, um, what, what do you, how do you? <laughs> Sorry, so, uh, uh, Gail, what is your opinion on this? Uh, my opinion is that when we try to contact our GP surgery, we can't get through. And yeah. it just rings and rings and rings and rings. We do have uh, my GP app, which we can go on, but if it's something um, specific, other than seeing a doctor, there's nowhere there where you can sort of put in, like, for instance, the DVLA. I couldn't put in, I needed to see a doctor because of the DVLA. And it just right. comes up with lots of different doctors who I don't know who they are, and times when they will ring you back. Well, I want to see somebody. I don't want to speak to a strange voice. Yeah. On the phone, I need to be able yeah. to see who I'm talking to. So, Why? Yeah. Why, Gail? Why? Because I like to be able to see people's faces and I can communicate better that way. It's, yeah. uh, I, I feel uncomfortable when I'm talking to somebody on a phone that I don't know who it is. It's just a voice yeah. making yeah. noises yeah. and then it gets muffled and then I get confused because yeah. I lose the track of the conversation. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I need to see some people's lips. I need to see their face. Yeah. Um, because I'm partly hearing, but partly just decoding. 
um, you know, it, as we all know, it takes longer for us as we get um, more and more. Oh, what word can I use? Discombobulated. <laughs> yes, discombobulated. discombobulated. Yeah. Brilliant. That's almost a yeah. strategy. Um, but, but it's also for them sure. to see us thinking and not start interrupting and... Well, that's true as well, you know, actually. You yeah. can't see yeah. that on and, the phone. And for them to see if we're looking grey and haggard or <laughs> yeah. whether we are, well, grey anyway, um, grey-skinned and haggard or, or whether we're looking cheerful and chirpy yeah. and pink. Dora, yeah. you want to say something? Yeah, my my GP practice is terrible. I haven't seen. Well, I went in earlier in the year, but you phone up, and like Gail says, you can't get through. And then they say <coughs> they'll get the doctor to phone you back. Mm. They don't give a time. Yeah. And then I, I'm terrible on my phone. Mm. Have you told them that? Yeah, yeah. And I've told them, could I, I've asked if I could see the same doctor because mm. when I have managed to get an appointment, it's a different doctor all the mm. time and they haven't looked at my notes. <laughs> yeah, quite. And, mm. and so I've got to explain mm. that I have dementia and I've come about such and such. And I mean, and some of the responses I've had when I, oh, really? Have you got dementia? Well, mm. read the notes, isn't it? They've got, yeah. And, and then they ask me what medication I'm on. And mm. I said, well, I don't know. Can't yeah. you? <laughs> this is describe it. <laughs> So just I would like assume that. from that that your practice does not, I'm surprised, but that your practice's electronic system does not flag, you know, and as a front page thing, first time you go into someone's notes, it should flag yeah. dementia or it should flag carer. I mean, yeah. Key, yeah. two key things that, that most practices who are in any way dementia aware will will make sure happens 